Welcome to the Astrologian 1 to 100 leveling skills guide. I'll be going over all of your skills as you try to do different versions of Is This Your Card? Every expansion better than the rest of them, but also hopefully kill your enemies along the way. Watch as you go from this. Let's go gambling! Aw oh, dang it! Aw oh, dang it! To oh, dang this. It. You know, actually, knowing exactly what I'm gonna get is pretty cool, you know? This is a beginner-focused series, aimed to help those new to Final Fantasy XIV, the MMO genre, or still just need a little help. In that same vein, this will be focused on your actions and how to use them. We'll not be going deep into optimization, instead focused on the general play and giving general opening rotations. We will go through these together in order to help new players understand the process. If you wish to push your play further, there are further places you could research the job. The goal here is to drop players in on the ground level so they can make strides to improve themselves. Tooltips are broken up by expansion and that expansion's a level cap. So level 50 for A Realm Reborn, 60 for Heaven's Word, 70 for Stormblood, 80 for Shadowbringers, 90 for Endwalker, and our final level cap of 100 in Dawn Trail. I recommend all players add Sprint and Limit Break to their hotbars, both found in the General tab of the Actions menu. And as for how my hotbars build, it'll make sense at 100. Just put your skills on your hotbar so that you are comfortable as you play. Everyone has their own way of doing things. If you want more info on the how and why I set up my UI, check the description for a video about it. Finally, keep in mind that this is an active MMO. Patches can and will change jobs. Check the description for a quick overview of each patch's changes or special notes. With all that out of the way, please support me in whatever way you can, check my links below, and let's begin. Astrologian is the pure healer partner to White Mage, or a healer focusing on healing HP over providing HP shielding. That isn't to say Astro doesn't do anything else, as it has a large assortment of different buffs and mitigations. Arguably, Astrologian is the most complex of the healers due to how all of your actions work. This leads to the job needing to plan their heals ahead of time more than the other healers in casual content. The unique thing about Astrologian is the card system. Simply boil down to an assortment of buffs for your party, there is more to it. Putting the damage cards on stronger players and using the support cards in different situations, all while trying to still use all your normal tools. It's a complex toolkit, but makes it very flexible. To obtain Astrologian, you need to reach the Heavensward expansion, which is immediately accessible upon completion of A Realm Reborn. The final quest of it is called Before the Dawn. Head into Ishgard's The Pillars, find the Astrologian Guild at the Anthenaeum Astrologicum to the east, and pick up the job as any level 50 job you have. Let's get into the finer details of your skills. We start at level 30 with a couple already. This includes a few roll actions. Repose, Essena, Swift Cast, and Lucid Dreaming. Got some very important buttons here, but I am not going over them here. Check the card or the description for a video on healer roll actions. Level 20, Maim and Mend. This is just some power boosts. 10% extra power on our damage and healing, which is entirely unimportant as far as how we play. This is less a power boost, more just the status quo. Level 1, Malefic, and level 4, Combust. These are our two main attacking moves and what we'll be dealing with for our entire time. Malefic is a basic spell, dealing 150 potency of damage to a target. It has a 1.5 second cast time and costs 400 MP. Combust, meanwhile, is an instant cast spell, costing 400 MP that does no direct damage. Instead, this is a dot, or damage over time. This does 50 potency of damage for 30 seconds. Dots work on a server tick, occurring every 3 seconds. Divide the length of a dot by 3 seconds to get the number of times it does damage. This makes Combust a 500 potency attack in total. If an enemy is going to live for more than 9 seconds, it is outright stronger than a single Malefic. At higher levels, enemies will live for that and far longer. Mid-pull with trash mobs while the tank is running, feel free to pop combust on enemies. This will slowly weaken them as you run, since you otherwise can't normally run and cast. It's better than doing nothing otherwise. This is especially effective the more enemies the tank pulls, since that's more enemies you can combust. Be sure to swap to Malefic if an enemy already has combust on it. Level 2, Benefic, and level 26, Benefic 2. These are your two main healing spells. Benefic costs 400 MP with a 1.5 second cast time, giving your current target a heal with 450 potency. Benefic 2 is the same cast time, but costs 700 MP and heals 700 potency. The math seems to come out in favor of Benefic being better, 
healing 50 more potency for free versus the MP cost. But in practice, this isn't so cut and dry. Benefic is barely more efficient with the cost of needing to cast more healing spells. The lower raw output of healing per cast is not worth it in the vast majority of situations. If you're having MP issues, there's far more issues at hand than the efficiency of Benefic versus Benefic 2. Healing more HP faster is going to almost always be better. The main case for using Benefic is that you died and need to conserve MP to an extreme degree. The other is that you're too low level to use Benefic 2. Otherwise, remember the other part of healing. If nobody is hurt, I mean actually hurt, not missing 10% of their HP only, do damage. Because Benefic 2 is relatively cheap and heals so much, you will have tons of times for putting out the damage. Spend some time getting used to how much a Benefic 2 heals a tank, so you know when you need to start healing. Level 10, Helios. This is our AoE heal, Area of Effect. 1.5 second cast time, costing 700 MP. It heals everyone within 15 yards of yourself with a 330 potency heal. If multiple people, or even the entire party, is missing some HP, you can throw out Helios to heal everyone. Just be wary of that one party member sitting at the far corner of Brazil. If they're out of range of the heal and they're low on health, they may need some babying. In higher level duties, raid-wide damage that can't be avoided is very common. So get used to those types of players. Even then, Helios isn't the main answer to AoE healing. Level 12, Ascend. With a very long 8 second cast time and equally massive 2400 MP cost, this brings a single player back into the fight. Mistakes happen, no matter by who. You can't save everyone in every situation. This cleans up the mess. In many cases, you want to get to raising fallen players as soon as possible. Swift cast is our main way, turning 8 seconds into no cast time. You may need to spend some time healing the party first though, especially if your co-healer died in 8 player content. Don't wait too long though, you may need to raise them without swift cast. You'll have to find the balance per fight and per death in each fight. If a tank is down, you need them alive for holding bosses and enemies. Co-healer down, they handle half of the healing. DPS is down, they help kill faster. You can also attempt to macro a message to ascend to tell your co-healer about who you are raising so they don't also try to raise. If you do that, keep it simple. Don't spam the chat with some silly joke. Keep it informational. Even then, the proper macro may still lead to both healers raising the same player. Swift cast is swift after all. Level 6, Light Speed. This is our first skill with charges. Charge skills can hold multiple uses, with light speed able to hold two charges at once. You will gain one charge every 90 seconds. Light speed reduces cast times for all spells by 2.5 seconds. This effect lasts for 15 seconds. While all your main skills are a 1.5 second cast time, a few rare ones are 2.5, and ascend is 8. But you won't want to waste light speed on ascend typically. That's a severe emergency kind of move. This essentially boils down to a movement tool and for allowing you to weave in abilities between spells better. For an average player, the former is the more usual use. 1.5 second cast times are still cast times, so even though it's shorter, there can be situations where you don't have time to stop and cast at all, even with techniques like slide casting. Any situations with a lot of movement? Use light speed to continue to be able to cast spells, especially important if you need to heal and move. Bosses are still going to do attacks and mechanics during movement, so it's not all for damage. I really need to emphasize the power of light speed. This is a lot of free time for movement whenever you need it, and it's going to get better as we get higher level. Level 15, Essential Dignity. On a 40 second cooldown, this restores a varying amount of healing. It has a base heal of 400 potency, but increases up to 900 potency as the target loses HP, maxing out when the target has 30% or less of their max HP. What this means is, you want to use this when the target has as little HP as possible, but you need to be careful, as 30% is pretty low. Getting the maximum 900 potency can be extremely dangerous in later levels but not too bad in low levels. Practice letting the tank get low before you use this, but don't go beyond your comfort zone. Even without the full power, this is a very strong heal. The main strengths are the relatively short cooldown and being an ability instead of a spell. 
You can weave this in between spell casts, losing no time. Let's take an extreme example of, say, a Gunbreaker using Super Belide, their invulnerability cooldown. I highly recommend learning the differences between the tanks, if just for their individual invulns. Anyway, Super Belide will reduce the Gunbreaker down to 1 HP no matter what, but make them invulnerable. You need to make sure they are healed before the invuln runs out. So one thing you could potentially do is an attack into Essential Dignity into Benefic 2. This keeps your GCD rolling the entire time and is a huge burst of healing. 1600 potency worth. Everyone is going to need healing though, not just the tank. Did a DPS take avoidable damage right before a raid wide? Essential Dignity them and save their life. Level 30, Astral Draw, Umbral Draw, and play 1 to 3. Let's start with the Astral and Umbral button to start to understand how these work. These are alternating skills on a shared 55 second cooldown. You start with Astral Draw. Pressing this will start the cooldown and turn it into Umbral Draw. Upon using Umbral Draw, it will turn back into Astral Draw. Both of these will restore 2000 MP on use. Entering a duty, you will start with your Astral cards already drawn, and the button becoming Umbral Draw. This means there is no maintenance when you get into a duty. You can get right to using the cards as needed. Functionally, these are on a 60 second cooldown because of play 1. Them being 55 seconds is for helping you time with openers, how you open a fight. I'll go into deeper details during our first opener discussion. If you also accidentally forget to draw cards, the 5 second lower cooldown means they'll eventually line back up with when you need them. Let's talk about what each one does now, which is where play 1, 2, and 3 comes in. Astral Draw will turn the play buttons into the Balance, the Arrow, and the Spire respectively. These are all very different cards. Each card will give a buff to a single player. The Balance will give any melee or tank a 6% buff to their damage for 15 seconds. Anyone else only gets a 3% buff. If you have a melee in your party and they seem to be doing good damage, give them the Balance. If you only have ranged DPS, consider if the tank is doing good damage. 6% on a good tank can be 3% on a good ranged. The arrow increases all healing received on the target by 10% for 15 seconds. This is great for when you're about to throw the tank a bunch of heals. You can also put it on the one player who is taking more damage than everyone else to make sure your heals top off their HP. This affects both spells and abilities, so you do not need to use only specific skills to make use of the card. This also affects the heals from your co-healer. The Spire has a 30 second timer, but is going to be removed upon being spent. The target will be given a shield of 400 potency of healing. So again, that one player who is taking extra damage, this can go to them for saving their life. When given to a tank, it's a little bit of not needing to heal them. The ideal place to give a tank this is for tank busters. Those attacks that do heavy damage to even tanks. In trash pulls, you just throw it on them at any time. Next is Umbral Draw. Using Umbral Draw without using all of your Astral Draw cards will automatically delete those cards, replacing them with the Umbral set. These are the Spear, the Bowl, and the Ewer. The Spear, ironically, gives ranged DPS and healers a 6% damage boost. Melee DPS and tanks only get 3%. The same rules generally apply as the Balance, but in reverse. Try and pick out the good players and focus on buffing their damage. The Bowl is a 15 second mitigation, all damage taken is reduced by 10% on that player. When big damage is coming in, tank busters or just wall to wall pull, throwing this on the tank can stop a hefty amount of damage. If someone in the party is collecting vulnerability, damage taken increased stacks, this can help that player survive the unavoidable damage of the fight. There's almost always that one person, even if that's you. The Ewer is a powerful hot heal over time on a target for 15 seconds. Like dots, they activate every three seconds so the player will be healed 5 times for 200 potency. This is a total of 1000 potency of healing. This can heal up a player all on its own. For giving it to the tank, tanks are always taking passive damage from enemy auto attacks. This will help keep their HP from going down as fast. There are far more cases you could be using most of these cards. The damage cards are simple, buff player damage in the opener, while the other cards have flexibility in the exact specifics of how you use it. You might end up holding both cards for right before your next Astral or Umbral usage. You might use them both immediately. You could spread them out over the 55 second cooldown. Ultimately, just make sure you are using them at all. A card used poorly is better than not used at all. All the support cards will benefit the tank in some way. 
The arrow is the only card you might struggle to make any use of, since you need to throw heals onto the target after the card is put onto them. As you learn the finer details and get more comfortable with healing in general, you'll learn all the subtle differences between every situation. For now though, any situations where you think the card has a benefit, use it. If you can't find a situation and the cooldown is about to run out, just throw the card onto the tank so it does something rather than nothing. But then, for Dawn Trail, they removed Astrologian's most important skill. Level 30, Undraw. Yes, I needed to use that joke one last time. But that is our starting toolkit. Most of it was spent on draws, but otherwise you're not much different to a white mage. It's that and Essential Dignity, which is an amazingly good ability this early on. Take the time to practice as needed, and again, don't get lost in the cards. Put as little thought into it as you can if you're struggling. The muscle memory will come naturally. Level 34, Aspected Benefic. Costing 400 MP and having an instant cast, Aspected Benefic heals a target for 200 potency and puts a hot on the target. This hot is worth 200 potency for 15 seconds, healing 1000 potency. In total, that's 1200 potency. If your tank doesn't need immediate healing and is taking sustained damage, this is your go-to spell over Benefic or Benefic 2. It costs less and heals even more. The only issue is the 15 second wait time for the full benefit. Enemy damage does go up, and the tank could make mistakes and take big hits out of nowhere. You rarely need to keep tanks topped off 100% in casual content, but any significant damage often needs to be healed sooner than regents can handle. A big benefit here is the instant cast. You can use Aspected Benefic on the move for some cheap healing on the team. This includes during wall-to-wall -wall pulls. Just be careful not to cast at the same time as the tank engages the enemies, or you might get enmity for a moment. If you are following the tank closely though, this isn't much of a problem. If you see a DPS has taken a lot of extra damage but you know that no raid-wide attacks are coming, you can throw a regen on them to let that take care of the rest. Just like you could do with the Ewer, with the Ewer being the no-cost option. When you don't have Ewer, if the tank is taking continual damage, pop Aspected Benefic on them when they do start to need heals. You could even put both on the tank for super regens. You don't need it running all the time since there's no point if they're not hurt. Level 36, Enhanced Benefic. No, this does not make Benefic good. It adds a 15% chance that every Benefic you cast will make your next Benefic 2 a guaranteed critical heal so long as you use it within 15 seconds. Do you know what else has a 15% chance? Not crits, because those have higher chances to happen. You could spend more time on Benefic that could have just been used on Benefic 2 for better heals that can already crit. The cases you ever cast Benefic are low to begin with. This is not something to count on. Level 40, Maim and Mend 2. Same as before, but this time increasing by 30%. You might not even notice it, it's just base power, no gameplay change. Level 40, Aspected Helios. This is our first example of a job quest locked skill. By this point in the game, you better have learned to be doing them. They remain a required thing to do up to level 70. I won't verbally mention this going forward, instead having a notice in the top left. Costing 800 MP and having a 1.5 second cast time, this is just like Aspected Benefic, but for Helios. The same 15 yom range, healing a smaller 200 potency, but adding a hot of 100 potency for 15 seconds. A 500 potency hot for 700 total potency. That's more than double the power of Helios. For a minuscule 100 MP increase, use this over Helios in a lot of situations. There are situations where you wouldn't though. If people are taking avoidable damage often, they may need healing faster. There could also be multiple instances of high damage with a short delay between them, in which you'd want to use Helios and then Aspected Helios. Let the regen do its work once the immediate threat is over. Just remember that if your party is playing messily, you may want to err on the side of caution and heal faster. Also, if nobody is hurt, you don't need Aspected Helios running. Wait for damage to worry about the regen and it's weaker than using a Benefic 2 for tanks and wall-to-wall -wall pulling. One of our missing roll actions comes in here with Surecast at level 44. Level 45, Gravity. For a 400 MP cost, this does 120 potency to a target and all enemies within 5 yomps of the original target. 
on two or more enemies, this is stronger than Malefic. On five or more enemies, it's stronger than the full duration of Combust. Though typically you're going to swap to Gravity only after the tank stops running. While running with the tank, throw on some Combusts. Then when they stop and plant their feet, start spamming Gravity. Keep an eye on the tank's HP, of course. I've mentioned it before, but if your tanks haven't been doing wall-to-wall -wall pools yet, you're going to meet them soon. You can still fit in damage and keep the tank alive. Level 46, Combust Mastery and Combust 2. One whole level later, Combust gets buffed to 60 potency, 600 total potency. This puts it equally as strong as gravity on 5 enemies, needing 6 enemies hit to be better. Generally, the use cases haven't changed. You can get Combust while the tank is pulling, then swap to gravity when they stop. It's very unlikely you'll ever reapply Combust at this point. It's also okay if you don't Combust every enemy. Taking out multiple enemies faster is better than making sure one enemy dies faster. Plus, you need the full duration for the full power of Combust anyway. Level 48 is our final roll action, Rescue. Level 50, Divination. On a 2 minute cooldown, this buffs your allies with a 6% damage boost for 20 seconds. That 30 arm range guarantees it hits everyone in the majority of cases. Divination should be used on cooldown while in combat, which will hopefully align it with everyone else using their specific buffs on cooldown as well. This is the same power as a correctly used card, but not the same as your cards. You can stack a card buff and the divination buff. This retroactively makes them stronger as stacking buffs is multiplicative. When it comes to using it in wall-to-wall -wall pulls, don't use it immediately. Wait for the tank to stop. Most jobs can't do much to enemies on the move and will be putting their all into a big burst phase when the tank stops. Otherwise, simply use it whenever a big fight is happening and try to use it on cooldown. Hold it only if a battle is about to end. Level 50, Sinistry. On a 2 minute cooldown and lasting for 20 seconds, this puts a buff on a target and cannot be put on yourself. Anytime a single target healing spell, which means no essential dignity, is used by you on your party, that target will be healed for 40% of the original heal. This includes on your Sinistry target, making it act like a 40% GCD healing buff. So place this on the tank before single target healing spells to reduce how many heals you need or give a large boost. Or maybe a DPS is taking avoidable hits. Put Sinistry on the tank so you incidentally heal them while you heal that DPS. Potentially the other way around with Sinistry placed on the DPS. Some fights can involve healing two tanks, so healing both at the same time. The fact that there's many ways to use this skill is one of Astrologian's strengths. You're very flexible in a lot of ways, which is also why Sinistry is one of your worst skills. You have so many flexible ways to heal, rarely do you need to do any sort of GCD healing in casual content. The better the healer you are, the more you only use your abilities for healing. GCD healing isn't just a damage loss, it means something has gone wrong in most cases for you to even need to cast that heal. In Astro's case specifically, you have so many OGCD options. And final note, regens do not count. The cast of Aspected Benefic will give the 40% heal, but the hot will not be buffed by Sinistry. Let's quick mention our opener and how there's not much there. Healers tend to have very simple openers, and in the current iteration they are no different. The one hitch is how they interact with cards. Pre-pull, Malefic. Combust, Light Speed, Malefic, Malefic, Divination, The Balance, Malefic, Umbral Draw, Malefic, The Spear, Malefic, 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 Combust, Malefic Spam. This is very simple. To start, remember that you enter duties with Astral Draw already active, meaning you have cards ready to use. While they are not featured here, feel free to use Arrow and Spire somewhere you can fit it. Pre-pull Malefic is focused on timing your first cast with the tank. In higher tier content, you tend to be given a countdown timer. In casual content, you just have to try and cast when you see the tank running to pull the boss. Then we combust into light speed so that all of our casts are instant. Later on we have more weaving to do, but this double weave of divination and the balance is only possible when under the effect of light speed or swift cast on the preceding malefic. 
We time these here to align with party buffs in a specific way. Remember, buffs multiply together to be even stronger. So when everyone throws out their buffs, they get stronger together. We then immediately umbral draw to get our other cards, if just to use the spear. Note that the balance and the spear will not be placed on you, but on the corresponding DPS players where possible. From there, it's all malefic spam into... a combust? This seems a bit early, doesn't it? This should be going out at the last moment of party buffs. This ends up making it extremely worth, despite it being an early refresh. From here, you can just use Astral Draw when it comes off cooldown, and repeat the process every two minutes. Otherwise, use your spells the same as always. Now, let's mention the lack of any healing in here, and how I will not be giving a healing rotation in this video. The goal is to minimize healing while still keeping everyone alive. The line for this changes per every single instance and every different party. Some players will have less gear or skill. I cannot give a single opener to go off of. General battle openers work in the vast majority of situations. This is not true of healing rotations. A fundamental understanding of your toolkit and how much they heal in a given situation is something you can't place in a rotation. Using your best and strongest heal first will be wrong in some fights, but the absolute correct call in others. Finally, AoE rotation. Uh, combust while moving, spam gravity. Throw out cards in divination when the tank stops so everyone can do big damage. Given its AoE, it's probably a wall-to-wall -wall pull. Remember to keep the tank healed between gravity uses. That ends our short trip to 50 in A Realm Reborn skills, but now we've caught back up to the base level of Heavensward, so let's check those skills. Level 54, Malefic Mastery and Malefic 2. Malefic 2 is 160 potency, that's a 10 potency buff. That's it. Level 58, Collective Unconscious. On a 60 second cooldown, this creates a bubble around you with a radius of 8 yams. This is a channeled skill. You must stand still for it to be maintained. If you are moving during the activation or move at any point after, the skill ends. You can use it for up to 18 seconds, but this is not something you want to be doing. First, notice the extra pulse that happens. All allies within 30 yams of you will get a 10% damage reduction buff for 5 seconds. Anyone inside the bubble will get a 15 second hot, healing 100 potency, totaling 500 potency. The reason you can channel the bubble for longer is anyone inside the bubble on a server tick will have the damage reduction and hot durations reset back to 5 and 15 seconds, so you could keep the bubble up to extend the buffs. Though again, don't do this, as you could be doing so many other things instead of the very small benefits of channeling. Even if you instantly end the skill, both effects get applied. This is how we want to usually use Collective Unconscious. It's very rare for you to have a reason to channel the bubble for more than a second. In trash pools, you could get close to the tank and pop Collective. It's small, but a 500 potency heal and a couple seconds of extra damage reduction means extra leeway for a moment. The short cooldown means that any boss fight coming up will still have Collective Unconscious available, so no reason not to use it. Which inside of bosses, you can pop the skill right before some sort of raid-wide damage to reduce it. If you are able to hit people with the bubble too, the damage from the AoE will be healed as well. This can be difficult to manage though, as some players might be standing far away. Use Collective Unconscious often, and try to aim to make use of both effects. Level 60, Celestial Opposition. On a 60 second cooldown, this is an OGCD aspect at Helios. Same 200 potency cure on hit, and 100 potency hot for 15 seconds, totaling up to 700 potency of healing. It even has the same 15 yom range. So basically, this outright replaces one use of Aspect of Helios every 60 seconds. Or you could stack them together if the situation calls for it. Some base healing while the regens work to do the rest. Unlike Aspect of Helios though, this can and should be used on single targets, since it's also the same power as Benefic 2. In Trash Pulls, the tank is the only one that will need a lot of healing, and abilities are just free healing. If a DPS does take incidental damage when you go to use this, they'll be healed too. In bosses, this is your answer to most raid-wide damage for a good number of levels. This alone should heal your party in so many cases thanks to the short cooldown. Throw it out, assess the situation, and heal whoever needs more, such as the tank who is still taking boss damage. We only got two new skills, but both are flexible with short cooldowns. We can use them early and often. We'll get a little more of that with Stormblood. 
Level 62, Earthly Star. On yet another short 60 second cooldown, this allows you to place a massive AoE on the ground that has a few different steps. Click the skill, and then click the location you want to place it. Controller uses plus X to select where to place it. The area of the skill is indicated by the glowing lights at the edge. Upon placing, Earthly Star will grant you Earthly Dominance for 10 seconds and turn the button into Stellar Detonation. Stellar Detonation has the star explode into both a strong attack and strong heal. Stellar Burst will deal 205 potency of damage to all enemies inside and heal all allies for 540 potency. If we let the Earthly Dominance buff wear off, Giant Dominance will be granted for 10 seconds. The star in the center will also begin to glow brightly. At the end of those 10 seconds, or upon hitting Stellar Detonation, Stellar Explosion will execute. This is a 310 potency AoE to all enemies, with 720 potency of healing to all allies inside. Given the size, it's near impossible for an ally or enemy to be outside of the range. Placed in the center of an encounter or an arena, anything and everything will be affected. In trash pulls, every single enemy will be hit with a massive AoE hit, while your tank gets healed for just slightly more potency than Celestial Opposition or Benefic 2. In bosses, this is guaranteed to heal the whole party and give the boss a good punch in the face. The only issue with this skill is that first 10 second wait. Sure, Stellar Burst is no slouch, but Stellar Explosion is the goal. As a result, it becomes a game of learning timing. You must use Earthly Star 10 to 20 seconds before you need it. If below 10 seconds, you need to wait a little more before you can set it off. If more than 20 seconds, it will explode before you need the heal. You absolutely want to be using this first and foremost in a lot of situations. It is that strong, but you also need to make sure you're timing it. If holding it for 5 seconds would line it up with big raid wide damage, it's probably worth it. If you're holding it for say, 30 seconds? Not worth holding. At minimum, you're wasting free damage. Trash mobs absolutely make this your first ability based heal. You have to wait 10 seconds anyway, and you can just completely forget about it. It'll explode in 20 seconds anyway, while doing a lot of damage. This will give the tank a good pick me up. Level 64, Malefic Mastery 2, and Malefic 3. Malefic 2 is now Malefic 3 and is 190 potency to a target. Nothing changes otherwise. Level 68, Hyper Light Speed. Lightspeed has been reduced from 90 seconds to a 60 second charge time. This means you can afford to pop it far more often, giving heals or damage on the move. Lightspeed was already very good, but this short recharge timer makes it ridiculous. 15 seconds of every minute, 25% of the time, you have free movement. You can store movement for later for up to half a minute of movement, or use as the situations come up. It's a hugely important skill. Level 70, Minor Arcana Mastery and Minor Arcana. Oh boy, more cards! What I always wanted, Pot of Greed. Allowing us to draw a fourth card with every Astral and Umbral draw. Astral draw will turn Minor Arcana into Lord of Crowns with Lady of Crowns from Umbral draw. The Lord of Crowns will do a 400 potency AoE to all enemies within 20 yams of yourself. Lady of Crowns has the same size, but instead heals the party. This is 400 potency of healing. As with all your other cards, you obviously want to be using these. Lord of Crowns is just free damage on everything, no needing to worry about the healing part of it. In AoE situations, this is a huge amount of damage. You've definitely experienced wall-to-wall -wall pulls by now, so 400 potency of damage on 10 enemies? That's 4000 potency in a single button. Even on just a boss, that's a really strong hit. As for Lady of Crowns, this may be an AoE and thus better used for stuff like raid wides in bosses. But no matter what, you're going to end up getting a few Lady of Crowns in trash packs. Much like your Heavensward skills, they are AoE but doesn't mean they can't be used for just the tank. All your resources can be dedicated to the tank. A free 400 potency heal you'll lose next Astral Draw is better spent on just them than not at all. Think of it like the Spire. That is 400 potency of shielding. Lady is 400 potency of healing instead. It's extremely worth it. With our full Stormblood toolkit, we actually have two additions to our opener. Again, healing based stuff isn't really built around for a general opener. Only the battle stuff. Heal is stuff you most often build around a fight, even on the casual end. So let's point at these additions. Earthly Star is first. Before the tank pulls the boss, you can place Earthly Star to let it cook. This is best done in stuff where you're guaranteed a pull timer, but this is still worth it regardless. 
Just don't be placing it if you have a party member in a cutscene. The second change is adding in Lord of Crowns. We're going to Umbral draw it into a Lady of Crowns if we don't spend it, so spend it immediately before. This should be more than late enough to catch all party buffs for buffing its damage much further. Somewhere in here the Earthly Star will pop on its own, ideally after damage goes off, but again if you aren't doing high-end content, your tank probably won't let you properly time placing your star. We have a few more great skills ahead, but getting really into the planning aspect of Astrologian. We'll see how in Shadowbringers. Level 72, Combust Mastery 2, Malefic Mastery 3, Combust 3, and Malefic 4. Combust 3 is getting a small bump up to 65 potency per tick, or a total 650 potency dot. Malefic 4, meanwhile, is 230 potency, a 40 potency boost over Malefic 3. Still the same skills, though. Level 74, Celestial Intersection. On a 30 second cooldown, this restores a target's health for 200 potency, then applies a shield for 200% the original heal, or functionally 400 potency worth. This shield will last for 30 seconds, or until spent from taking damage. That's a spire worth of shielding. Essentially, this is a guaranteed 600 potency heal every 30 seconds. The simplest use is to just throw it on the tank on cooldown. Heals them a little, and prevents a little bit of incoming damage. It could be on trash mobs, boss auto attacks, or even tank busters. Before or after. Throw it before a buster to top them off and reduce the damage. After to heal up and prevent a few auto attacks. And obviously, you can throw it on non-tanks too. It's a cheap and low cooldown heal, so in boss fights this can heal away a mistake, and help the DPS to survive the incoming raid-wide attack. Though again, you have a bunch of options for this goal, which is why I want to re-emphasize here, Astrologian does have a lot of buttons, but that means you have a lot of options. This is both good and bad, since you need to keep track of them all. Level 76, Horoscope. This works similar to Earthly Star in there being a timing element for maximum effect. It has a 60 second cooldown and a 20 yom range. Using Horoscope applies the buff to all allies in range for 10 seconds. At the end of the 10 seconds, or upon hitting the button again, Horoscope will heal all players with the buff for 200 potency of healing. However, upon using Helios or Aspected Helios with Horoscope active, it will refresh the timer for anyone hit to 30 seconds and upgrade the buff to Horoscope Helios. This is double the power, doing 400 potency of healing. Raid-wide damage from bosses is starting to get up there. Some bosses will even do back-to-back raid-wide damage, or otherwise use it often. Anytime you feel you need to use Helios or Aspected Helios, throw up Horoscope first to give an extra 400 potency on top. Or let the regen of Aspected Helios work and pop Horoscope Helios for the second raid-wide. This isn't the only situation you can use it in. You can just throw it out by itself for a little healing. And Trash Pulls 200 potency isn't a lot, but it's something extra you could give to the tank. And technically this makes Aspected Helios stronger than Benefic 2 for a singular cast. Horoscope into Aspected Helios functionally makes the Helios worth 900 potency. In bosses with raid-wide damage, Celestial Opposition has been established to be as strong as an Aspected Helios. If that's not enough healing for topping everyone off, throw out Horoscope too for an extra 200 potency. Horoscope's biggest issue is that easier and stronger options aren't exactly on long cooldowns. To make the most of it, you need to be casting an AoE spell too, limiting power of it since you typically want to AVOID GCD healing. If a GCD heal is called for though, Horoscope ends up being a very strong ability. Level 78, Enhanced Essential Dignity. Essential Dignity now has charges. This is great, one of our potentially strongest single target heals now has two charges that can be stacked. Don't be afraid to spend these, the cooldown is still nice and short, and low HP players get a nice big heal. Level 80, Neutral Sect. On a 2 minute cooldown, this turns you partly into a shield healer and buffs all your healing spells by 20% for 20 seconds. So at worst you can use this as a healing power boost. Casting Aspected Benefic or Aspected Helios while under Neutral Sect will place a shield on all affected players in addition to the regens. These shields do not stack with each other, you can only place one shield on a player. The strongest shield taking priority. But they do stack with the shields from Scarlet and Sage. Aspected Benefic gives a shield worth 250% of the healing, or a functionally 500 potency shield. Aspected Helios gets a 125% shield, or a 250 potency shield. 
Again, this is on top of the regens, which in themselves are increased by 20% from Neutral Sect. Anytime some big healing is needed, this is your go-to skill. It's both very strong and flexible. It can be used for one or two target shielding, big single target healing spam if for whatever reason you need that, or you can get some major raid-wide healing in. Plus in higher end content, a single auto attack could be enough to completely eat away a shield. Like I said before, damage is going up for even dungeons, so a 20% increase to all spell healing is nice on its own. You can fight back trash mob damage when you run out of ability heals. Multi-raid wipes happen a lot more often, and high-end fights are going to be bringing in a lot of damage in general. Anytime you'll need to use healing spells, you can use less with Neutral Sect. Just be sure you're not spamming aspected skills and not even making use of those shields. Healing is starting to get harder, and this is a skill you can put it back in your favor. You're likely going to be using a lot of it in the coming dungeons with Endwalker. Level 82, Malefic Mastery 4, and Fall Malefic. This may be the last time we see Malefic change for good. We now have Fall Malefic. It's 250 potency of damage. Nice animation, I guess. And the damage only applies a whole two seconds after starting the cast. Level 82, Gravity Mastery and Gravity 2. Gravity 2 is a mere 10 potency increase over gravity, but I felt it was important to emphasize it in its own section that 10 potency in AoE is worth a lot more than single target. That's 10 extra potency for every enemy. Gravity remains better than Malefic on two targets here. Level 85, Enhanced Healing Magic. This buffs our healing spells by a bit. Benefic is up to 500 and Benefic 2 is 800 potency. Aspected Benefic has a heal and regen of 250 for a total of 1500 potency. Aspected Helios has a heal of 250 with regen of 150 for a total of 1000 potency on every ally hit. You've likely been GCD healing a lot more, so this will keep you going. Plus those aspected skill buffs are huge. Just make sure you're still using all of your tools in the correct ways. Sinistry and neutral for big healing boosts, Star and Opposition for easy and big heals. You're being forced to get more creative with your toolkit, especially since your off-global heals didn't get the same boosts. Level 86, Exaltation. On a 60 second cooldown, you can place this on a single player for 8 seconds. It reduces damage taken by 10%. When the buff falls off, it will heal the target for 500 potency. This is a less work, single target version of Collective Unconscious. You don't need to stand near the tank to get them in a bubble, and the heal is all at once rather than a slow regen. Regens have their place, but this certainly will be more comforting as a full heal. This takes care of the hit of a tank buster, and some of the healing needed afterward. For trash, it's a very good mitigation into helping you keep the HP steady. Tank isn't the only option for this skill, as usual. Can throw this on a DPS who took a Vuln stack. This will reduce the damage of raid wides or mechanics, and further make up the difference with healing them afterwards. This is especially true if they get multiple Vuln stacks. They're likely to die without a bit of help. Regardless of how you use it though, make sure we're rotating in Exaltation. Level 88, Enhanced Celestial Intersection. Celestial Intersection now has two charges instead of just one. As a reminder, this is essentially a 600 potency heal in total, with a very short 30 second cooldown. At the end of fights and in walks between the next one, one or both charges will fully recharge. Throw it on the DPS who is weakened before the next raid wide hit. Throw it on tank for tank busters. All the same uses apply, but with being able to pull a use without wasting time on the next one. Make use of these even more liberally than you were before. Even if you want to save one stack for emergency DPS babying, keep the charge timer running at all times. It's a quick and easy heal with extremely fast turnaround. Level 90, Macro Cosmos. On a massive 3 minute cooldown, massive for Astro standards, this is both a strong AoE attack and potentially party wide full heal. This also counts as a spell, rolling the GCD upon use. All enemies and allies within 20 yalms are affected. Starting with the simple damage, it does 250 potency to the first enemy, with all enemies after the first taking 150 potency of damage. Stronger than even gravity. Macrocosmos becomes Microcosmos after using it, or you can set it to be a separate button via skills page options, while placing a 15 second buff on you and all allies within range. Upon hitting Microcosmos, or when the timer runs out, all players with the buff will be healed for 200 potency, plus 50% of all damage taken during the buff, up to the max HP of each player. 
a full heal. It's not likely you'll get a full heal out of this in most cases, as this is two full HP bars of damage you need to take in 15 seconds, minus the guaranteed 200 potency. In casual content, this basically never will happen except for maybe the hardest hitting wall to wall pulls. That also only applies to the tank. Because of this, this is very much a skill that shines in higher end content more than casual content. At the minimum, extreme level. Though there is also this guy in Dawn Trail. Let's give an example. Two AoEs back to back. You can't survive two of them back to back without some healing. So you can macrocosmos, take the first hit, throw out some sort of heal such as Earthly Star, which will have placed 10 seconds earlier, then take the second hit. Assuming you've healed enough for everyone to survive, Macrocosmos will now wear off, healing everyone for the amount of damage one of those AoEs would do, plus the base 200 potency. To talk more about using this in trash pulls, you'd want to use this well ahead of schedule. As the tank starts taking heavy damage, you'll use Macrocosmos. Send them a heal or two as needed to make sure they are able to survive while Macrocosmos grows in power. Then either let the timer run out or pop it manually. Whichever is required to make sure the tank doesn't drop dead. At the very least, it will be worth a large chunk of their HP, if not all of it. At the absolute worst, this is a 200 potency heal and half of a single raid wide of damage. Well, assuming you use it before damage is taken. Which, yeah, you should, because it only does as much damage as a single malefic. You're not going to gain damage by using it. The power is the heal. You're going to get some really good usage out of Macrocosmos as you level to 100 in Dawn Trail. Leveling dungeons are where things hurt the most so you'll at least get a taste of its power going forward. Level 92, Enhanced Divination and Oracle. For 30 seconds after using Divination, you will be granted the Divining Buff. This allows for one use of Oracle, which can be its own button or combined into Divination. This can be done on the skills page. Oracle itself is an obscenely powerful attack. You will perform an AoE on a target with a 5 yarm range. The target and all enemies in range will take 860 potency of damage. This is also an ability, so you can weave it between normal attacks. Genuinely, do I need to say more? Just use this anytime you use divination. Also, this is where our final opener comes in. We will go over that opener after the full toolkit. Level 94, Magic Mastery. This is a few small power boosts. Combust 3 has gone from 65 to 70 potency for a total of 700 potency for the full dot duration. Fall Malefic and Macrocosmos both go up to 270 potency. Macrocosmos is just so that it's not technically a damage loss over Fall Malefic. Yes, a skill being mostly for the heal every 3 minutes is a damage loss people complained about. Level 96, Aspected Helios Mastery and Helios Conjunction. Aspected Helios not only is stronger now, but is an entirely new skill. Helios Conjunction is a further 25 potency boost to the regen to 175 potency per tick. In total, we have a 1125 potency heal. It's not a large boost, but it definitely helps keep HP values up. Level 98, Enhanced Essential Dignity 2. Simply a third charge of Essential Dignity. The relative power of the skill has gone down with time due to both getting many other strong tools and just general effectiveness of healing being lower in higher levels. A short cooldown skill you can throw on a DPS who just took an avoidable hit or such, getting a third charge is never bad. This is the closest you have to an emergency button, and it works really well. At worst, you can keep one charge in stock for emergencies and not feel like you're missing out on using it in general. Level 100, Enhanced Neutral Sect and Sun Sign. From now on, using Neutral Sect will grant you the buff Sun Touched for 30 seconds. This allows you for one use of your final skill, Sun Sign. This is very simply a 10% damage reduction to all allies within 30 yams. This reduction lasts for 15 seconds. Very simple, but that makes it very easy to use. Got damage you want to reduce, especially 15 seconds worth? Sun Sign. The worst part of this is the fact you can only use Sun Sign after using Neutral Sect. There is no other way to get it. You also have to use it within 30 seconds of activating Neutral Sect. There is some leeway with using them at different times, but they always have to come relatively close together. On the bright side, you don't have to actively make use of Neutral Sect in order to use Sun Sign. If there is truly no need for you to use GCD heals during Neutral Sect, 
you can just pop the sun sign. It's highly recommended not to do that, but I don't make the content, nor do I have say on how well your party performs or how well you perform. If you truly don't need the neutral sect buff, you truly don't need it. Ideally though, you'll be able to make use of both parts. We end on a very simple note. Sun sign is just simply a good skill. Simple to use, just locked behind another. What isn't locked is your ability to do an opener every two minutes. So let's talk about your final opener. Before talking about the specifics, let's do a karaoke opener. This is where I go over your opener while saying the skill names as they are used. This will give you a better feel for how the opener works in terms of speed. Pre-pull. Earthly Star. Malefic. Combust. Lightspeed. Malefic. Malefic. Divination. The Balance. Malefic. Lord of Crowns. Umbral Draw. Malefic. The Spear. Oracle. Malefic. 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 Combust. Malefic Spam. Let's go over the full opener to discuss why we have everything as it is. This pre-pull Earthly Star is for getting the damage soon into a fight. You can change the timing of this skill based on when the first instance of raid-wide damage in a fight is. If the first instance of damage is 15 seconds into a fight, you can place the skill down about 5 seconds before it starts. The star will automatically explode and heal you up, while also doing damage. The pre-pull Malefic is also meant to be done about 2 seconds before the pull. This ensures you start doing damage as soon as possible. We then use Combust both for the weaving space for light speed and because the dot ticking will quickly do more damage to be stronger than the cast of Malefic. The light speed itself is for us to be able to easily do weaving for the rest of the opener. We can also move and do mechanics if called for, but in a vacuum it's for the weaving, which will be weaving divination and the balance here for timing with party buffs. The more buffs stack together, the stronger they get. Also remember that buffing cards are not for you, but the corresponding DPS. Lord of Crowns is next since you have damage buffs running now. This makes it do way more damage right before we toss away any leftover cards with Umbral Draw. Feel free to use the open weaving spaces after the first Malefic for using a card, or using them during the pre-pull. From here we give the Spear to a DPS and use Oracle to do a massive hit on the boss. The final note is the Combust at the end. This is about where party buffs will be falling off. Refreshing the dot early is fine because the buffs all make it a huge gain in terms of damage. It's very simple because healers don't have complex damage toolkits. Also, the lack of healing skills. Sure, Earthly Star heals, but most fights start with some form of damage that's just guaranteed. It's really here for the damage. We don't make healing rotations and openers otherwise because every fight's pacing is different. A general rotation will not work for most situations. Then for AoE, it's just spam gravity. It's basically the same as we had before. Just fill in all of our new OGCDs. There's not much to worry about there, besides dropping in heals as they are needed. Remember, you are still a healer. It's about knowing your kit and how to use it more than a rigid rotation. Flexibility is key for healing. That's Astrologian. A healer with an emphasis on planning and using things ahead of time. Don't get too lost staring at the stars, lest your party members be seeing stars when they die. Thank you for watching this Astrologian 1 to 100 leveling skills guide. Feel free to give feedback or ask questions on what might still be confusing to you. I am always seeking to improve, as should you. Don't stop with this guide, even if I succeeded in helping you improve. Please leave a rating, comment, sub, those really do help creators. You can also come watch me on Twitch or even go follow my Patreon. The links in the description will take you where you need to. Have fun in your adventures across Tural, and may the power of Anne and Hogs lay waste to your enemies.